what, what event was a happy event for you this this this, week? this well or this year this month? Um, the summer was really nice. It was nice and relaxed. I got to spend a lot of time with my coworkers. We we're just doing training sessions about once a week. I got to spend a lot of time with my mother. I'm getting close to her every year. Wow. Um, Could you think of one event that summarizes some of this? Oh, yeah. Well, we went to, my mom went to uh, uh, Wellfleet on the Cape, on Cape Cod. And we, we swam and we, she, she, she keeps me fit. You know, whenever I'm, whenever I'm getting too lazy, she helps me bring in the workout. Wow. So, so praise to my mother. I'm a lucky Boy, I'm a lucky young man. What's her first name? Uh, her name is Rosemary. Ro oh, wow. And she is so close to getting her first book published. So look out for Rosemary Oxenford's Back to the Source. It's back to the Source? Back to the Source. None of this, let's just get back to the future. Or <laughs> back to the Source. Yeah. Go, Rosemary Oxenford. I, I'm, I'm going to buy a copy as soon as this is out. Oh, it's, I'm definitely, I will bring you one. Oh, I forgot to bring mine to give to her. Yes, oh, I yeah, will. Definitely. I'm yeah. sure she'd be very interested to read it. Um, so I'd say today's a good day for me. Um, you know, they have been bad yesterday. I had a bit of a panic attack, but... And what is that like? Oh, it's scary, man. For me, I mean, it's different for other from people, but there are some similarities. I kind of feel like everything is a kind of radiation and going small and big at the same time, kind of distorting my dimensions. And so like I would be big? Yeah, you'd just be kind of like radiant and like... Looming over me. You feel like someone is pressing into your ah, body. Panic attack. <laughs> and then I would be small, tiny. <laughs> Where's Mikey? Yeah, where'd he go? Where'd he go? So, um, so that was my bad thing from yesterday. I and how do you get out of that? Uh, medication and meditation. Um, kind of just whenever it comes in waves. So whenever I start to feel it coming on, I say no, no, no. I will stand up, walk around, breathe. Uh, have some water and um, usually, well, every time I'm actually, I'm, 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 I'm lucky to, to have a medication that works for that. Wow. So give it 30 minutes of waves of panic, it's pretty much gone. And I got, oh, I, yes. this morning, feel violent, to put it mildly, and... It didn't leave. I went for a walk for a mile with a friend, mm -hmm. talked to another friend. Then I read about the Palestinian-Israeli war mm. um, by Ben Greenwald, who was a very unique voice, um, you know, neither of the right or the left. And that helped soften it a bit. And then I had to lie. What I do is... I lie in the sleeping bag and let the violence speak. It has nasty words, which I won't share on television tonight. And then I talk to it, <laughs> as I was telling you. And I eventually, after about an hour, say, well, thank you for the energy, and it dissipates. And I feel exhausted and blessed. It's as if parts of me, which were crushed certainly as a child, and then as an adult, <coughs> need to come out and sit out. And then they're crushed buds, really. And they really want to blossom in me, you know, and be loving and kind and fun. Mm -hmm. But they're so angry. Mm -hmm. And so if I can eventually say, nice bud, <laughs> nice bud, mm -hmm. thank you for being a bud, even though you're scared, scare me. I won't say the words, but mm -hmm. really scare me. And then usually two, three hours, I have to say some kind of word to the anger. Today it was thank you. The other day it was annihilate your ego, man. 
<laughs> Annihilation. And I said thank you and felt a little bit less wrapped up in myself. Mm. And it 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 just often feels like bliss. I feel light coming through because you know another stumped but in me is able to finally get unstomped and shake off like a dog shaking off water. Wow. And in a few hours, I'm lucky. I'll feel light coming through the cracked places. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's profound. I'm glad you, you have that ability to, to release that anger and, and heal, heal from that. Um, I was just thinking of um, how I could relate to that, and I, and I was thinking, you know, about a year or two ago, I would try to get out of my apartment, it would probably take me 20 to 30 minutes just looking at my stove, and rationally, I knew everything was fine, but I thought, if, if I finally, if I lose, I've finally got this beautiful place to live, this holy place, but if it all just disappears... You know, that would be the end. And it never, it never uh, did. <coughs> that, that ever happened. Um, and then eventually talking to other people who helped me think through it, I was able to slowly reduce that from 20 minute check to 15 minute check. And now I'm up at about 5 to 10. Can you check the stuff to see if it's going to turn on? Or yeah, it just, just just trying to get some peace of mind and just the fact that that's probably the most dangerous thing in my apartment yeah and if that goes wrong everything goes wrong that's just this the concept behind my irrational fear um but i've just been trying you know if i have to go to the 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 the, the grocery store do it like a small chore in the day and say okay i'm going to do this only tops five minutes and i'm going to go no matter how nervous <laughs> No matter how scared I oh, feel. Oh, good for you. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah, and it feels yeah. so good. And my entire rest of my day, all that energy, all that fear that I get throughout the day usually just goes away. And so that's just that one thing. And I'm not controlled by it. And so it can't mess up the rest of my day, you know? Wow, so love that's, it. That's, that's where I relate to this is This is wisdom. Young and old, take your pick or take your post. I hope we help. Um, yes, we hope. Well, unless you don't need our help, which is even better. Yeah, just enjoy the show. Yes. Enjoy your day. Good night. So maybe you'll sum up. We're reading this um, amazing story. Um, we're hoping to go to Canyon de Shea in Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. With your mom, if we can. Yeah, we should get a bunch of people. So yes, a bunch of people to go. That would be lovely. Take a plane over there or something. Yep. I, walking would be hard. <laughs> Definitely. So I think uh, to summarize, to summarize um, uh, all the, what we did last uh, show, we were going through each sentence and kind of describing how we felt about it, and we were reading this story by you know her name. Dina Metzger. Yes. I sent you a photo of her. Did you get it? I don't think so. Oh my. I'll check my email. I sent you if there's a famous photo of her. Mm -hmm. She had breast cancer. I think she lost one breast. Mm -hmm. And with this huge smile and arms outraised, yes. from naked from her torso up, with a tattoo over the missing the place where the breast was, she is ecstatic. Yeah. Right on, mm -hmm. right on, woman. So maybe we'll bring it sometime, but... You'll, uh, you can check, you, I'll send it again if you yeah, can Yeah, I'd like it. to see that. That's, that's very powerful, you know. Even if something so scarring can happen to you, you can rise above. Yes, and, and enjoy the help. Yeah. Make it a beautiful, something beautiful. Yeah, so she and her, her boyfriend, Michael, um, went out to go to, uh, I think we're going to Arizona, but right now they're in New Mexico. Yeah, now they're in New Mexico. Um, and she had this dream of a Native American teaching her a rain dance. And then she would do that dance and all of a sudden it would rain. So she, she went out with her significant other 
to go um, on a journey to see amazing nature. And there's some beautiful sentences that we, we talked about, just about her description of nature and this thing that was almost imposing on her, but the imposing was beautiful at the same time. It was um, a little bit confusing, but... Uh, see me! Mm. See, I'm beautiful! Mm. You can tell the next, next person you're interested in. Yeah. Look at me, which is true. I am handsome. <laughs> I'm a handsome woman. Yes, I want you to very lucky to have me. Very lucky to even look at me. <laughs> I wouldn't be too egotistical. <laughs> I would be great though. I'm beyond <laughs> egotistical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we were just going through it sentence to sentence and just talking about how we how we uh, related to it. And do you remember what she said about this landscape in the southwest? Oh, uh, remind me. She said, in the East, we love like we have it now. The beautiful green trees, the changing of the colors, the blue sky, and we're used to that beauty. And what did the West look like to her in New Mexico? Mm, it was um, the palette being pink and brown rock, dusty sage, everything muted by powder, dust, and heat, modulated by the uh, patina of stone and just all of this beautiful stuff about this uh, landscape that she'd never seen. <laughs> and it was dusty and dry. And she had to get used to seeing how beautiful it was. She says, ugly and mind, therefore suddenly beautiful. Right, your mind. You could say, I wonder if that would work the next day you run. <laughs> you're ugly, but you're my date, so you're beautiful. <laughs> oh, I don't think that would work. That would work. I can make a pickup line out of this story. I don't think that. But there's, there's actually truth to that. Mm -hmm. Some people that I'm getting to know, they are just be truly beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes they do not know it. Mm. I'm sure that's awesome for them to hear. And very beautiful thing to say, Michael. And true. Yeah. And beauty's coming from you. Um, yeah, so she described a lot about that. And then um, I think we ended on her talk about the dream. Um, it says, I speculated about doing the dance, the rain dance that the Native American taught her in the dream. Oh, um, happy Monday Indigenous Peoples Day. Y uh, yes. Yeah. I should say that. Happy, um, Mon Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah. But something stopped me. I said, when I had that dream, I was disrespectful to it. Magic is never to be used lightly. To If it is to be used at all. I, I, I need to, I've never done that. I, whatever power I have, yeah. I have <laughs> Misused, uh, misused. I mean, used to be a runner, proud of it, proud I was a. Now it's hard to walk. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that enjoying the running was a bad thing. No, I enjoyed the running was fine, but to think I was more, I was more alive than other people. Mm. I got my karma. Mm. Magic is never to use lightly. Um, nothing in the dream had um, admonished me to be silent. What I had known then, and I certainly knew now, that only the most enlightened people have a right to use the power to make rain. Wow! And that totally makes me think about um, this uh, past relationship that I was just in. It just seemed like it started at the end of the spring, beginning of the summer, and it just seemed like it, there was so much rain in the summer, and I just felt somehow connected to it somehow. Because summer previous, it was just drought. And then all of a sudden, this summer, I met this, this beautiful woman, and then all of a sudden, the weather changed, and I just felt connected to it somehow. In what way? Say a little more. Um, well, I don't want to blame anybody for for using powers to make rain. Do you think she was using powers? No, no, no. I just think I just felt like it was so connected, so so 
seemed relative to our relationship. That it was a rainy, it, it helped yeah. bring rain. Wow. Because we 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 both lived uh, too far far away from each other. Yes. We only got to meet each other every week, every other week, every yes. three weeks. So there would be this time, and some you know it was sometimes it was a little bit nice to have some time for recovery, but at the same time. I was. I felt so connected with her. It was. It was difficult just to have her so far away. Wow, um, that's very. That was very beautiful. You are a romantic. <laughs> hopeless romantic, maybe. Hopeless. Not maybe hopeless, but a romantic. Wow. I, I hope people are watching. You can rush. Call CCTV. That call. Send a letter. John Joshua William Oxenford, and he. Might answer, you might be your lucky day. <laughs> That'd be cool. I had a friend of mine, we did TV, Joel Keenan, who's now a doctor. Oh, cool. And he would have another chair here, and on the chair he would write, Will you marry me? <laughs> and he's been married twice now. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Is that his, uh, his prayer for marriage, or...? Just uh, he through. just wanted to advertise wherever he went. Yeah, he, he's interested. I would like to get married. He has three children already. Oh, wow. Second wife. So he prayed for it. I've been thinking about that as well. Just saying mantras of anything that I want every night. Um, my mom gave me this sort of a portable speaker. So I have it in my bedroom. And I, and I found this um, YouTube channel called Meditative Mind. And it says um, sort of ohms and chanting and vibrations and frequencies. And I just think of all the things I want and I just kind of say it, make it into a sentence and say it in a mantra. So tell me one sentence you might be care to. Um, let's say um, I, 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 I want to be able to go out late at night and not be taken back by my symptoms and have to leave. That's wow! Like, so how do you, you say, do you say, like, how do you say it? How could I make that in a poetic sense? Yeah, how do you say that? That the gods would listen. Yes, we had, they're, they're very fussy. If it's yeah. not poetic, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, yeah. what, what um, how would you say that? How do you say that? Um, I, I would think, you know, um, sometimes I, it depends, you know, it changes what I start with. Sometimes I say, I wish. Sometimes I say, I will. Wow. Sometimes I say, Tell me when I wish, if you want. Um, I wish to be able to go out late at night and not be affected by my symptoms. That's, that's, nice. that's, that's, that's concise. Thank you. They can hear that. Technical blueprint of what yes. I want to say. And then, you know, try to make it more poetic. I wish that I could be outside at night and flourish in the company of other people who I could only meet at that time. And wow. I said, that's wow. Wow. That's going to happen. If we did it on, if we do it on CCTV, out into the stratosphere. Well, I mean, thankfully, I'm feeling really good tonight, so something good must be. Yes, happening. it's happening. Mm. Mm. Um, so don't forget, yeah. John Joshua Williams Oxenford. If you'd like an evening walk somewhere, I'm available. <laughs> Whoa, I'm available. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, and sometimes I say I wish, sometimes I say I will, sometimes what I say... What do you say I will? I Jeez. Yeah, sometimes I feel, I've been, re I've been listening, I've been going over on Instagram, um, just starting to count this year, and I love it. <laughs> so I was looking at Instagram, and I was listening to these um, sort of change your mental state kind of um, uh, talk, uh, speakers, and often they say... Um, you know, if you if you focus with your mind and your heart, you know, if you say it very technically, it might not happen. If you say it very emotionally, it yes. might not happen. But if you connect the two, and you say what you really want, and you just continue that as a mantra, it may change how your subconscious mind will will work in the way that it will work to get you towards those goals. Oh, I would love to be able to walk. Like, um, mm -hmm. I, I once saw on the beach... Mm -hmm. A young boy, maybe four, mm -hmm. just running on the beach yeah. almost automatic not almost automatically. He didn't have to think about it. He just ran the way we breathe. Mm -hmm. So I would like that for me at eighty two and a half. <laughs> I'd like awesome. to run like a little boy and, yeah. and walk like a little boy. Yeah. Thank you. For sure. I feel it's gonna happen.
Heart of the League is good. It's good. Find that wow. And keep on saying That'll it. teach you to you get rewarded for staying with this television show and not switching channels. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all the stuff I've had with that. So what's, so what's you, you didn't tell us the I will, though. Oh, okay. I That's sort of a more of a kind of trying to get myself motivated to do it. Also, a little bit about I hope the gods are hearing me being so dedicated to my ambitions. So what would be what would be a, the sentence with I will? Um, I will go out at night and conquer my fears and not be affected by my symptoms. Wow! wow. Is that strong? That's the space. So I would do the same. I will walk like that boy I saw running on the beach. Yeah. I, will, I will just have natural movement of my legs without trying. Running or walking, mm -hmm. I will. Wow, I love that. It's almost scary. It's awesome. It's Why awesome. is that so scary? Because maybe it's it's a powerful thing, and you're just starting out, you know. Oh, I see that. Because it's dangerous. Because you will, initially. you might will something that's not good for you. Well, I mean, that sometimes makes me change my sentences. You know, sometimes I feel like, well, if I wish, you know, God's. I feel like can be tricky sometimes, you know, you'll be wishing for something and then it'll happen in kind of an ironic way or something like that. So I feel like the different, the more different ways I can say the same thing, the more the gods will listen to just the different perspectives that I have on, on what could become. And I won't be stuck on just one thing. I used to say one mantra, you know, 20 times a night. And that was it. And nothing really happened. I so, try different, different angles. Yeah. Just trying to exercise like, your we mind. Do we need the gods if we say, I will? I don't know. Maybe, maybe... Maybe we just need ourselves, power. each other. Maybe... Power within. Yes, power. I will. Wow, I'm going to walk better. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I Stay to... tuned for next week's show to find out yeah. how, you know, is John Joshua Williams Oxenford out late at night? Singing and dancing in the early autumn. <laughs> no fears whatsoever. Yeah. And Michael running around the dance floor. Yeah. Going, going for some laps around Central Square. Yes, oh my. Yeah. Um, so I believe that all works. And I feel like if, you don't, if you're not spiritual about it, if you don't believe in, in, in gods and all, and all that, you can think about it very technically. It'll let your subconscious or your mind, it'll let yourself know that that's what you want. And yes. the more you say it, it will realize, oh, I really want this. I love it. And so those parts of yourself will develop more. Whoa! Mm -hmm. I can feel the power. Now, you also say you pray. Yeah, yeah. And what would be the example of prayer? So that's more of a, a just, please God help me thing, you know, or, or of a, I'd like to get to know this God who accepts prayers instead of dedications I will, or instead of Oh, I wish I could, you know, and so sometimes I say, I pray that I will not be affected by my symptoms so that I can oh, well, so that, that, like it. That feels nice too. They feel very different and mm. both feel touching. Mm. I pray that I'll be able to run like that little boy and and walk the way that little boy walks. Yeah. Just his, his feet just doing their thing without much yeah. thought. Yeah, and you can even take that image and think of yourself and just you can even pray to your legs oh my you pray to your legs I would like you to walk again to your legs I'd like you to run and walk easily again as you used to do wow does that feel great it feels good you can talk to your legs you we have a shaman here you a very very humble shaman is he is he's only 34 is that true it's true it's true Wow! And I'm 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 gifted by speaking to a very wise man at 82. 82 and a half now. 82 and a half. There we go. <laughs> Over. Yes. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like I've gotten a lot from being on this show, and I appreciate. Me it. too. Let's hear it for youth and age. We should change the name of the show. Young and old wisdom. Yeah. Wow. I maybe. Like that. Yes, I like that. Maybe we'll change that. that. Yes. Wisdom from different ages. Oh, that is great too. Yeah. From I think I like that even better. I feel like we could make that a sort of like 
uh, sub quote. You know, yours is like the title, and then mine is like the, the description. Yes, wisdom. We'll tell people, welcome to wisdom from different ages. Yeah, we should get. We could get other people on here too. Yes, yeah. sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm I I love your friend Alex to come. Yeah, Alex. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Sarah. Yes. Been both of them on this show before, and rest in peace, Anthony, as well. I'm sure he's with us. I'm going to the place in the Arboretum mm -hmm. where Anthony and I used to sit on a rock slab wow. at St. Peter's Hill, and you can see a huge landscape of Boston. Wow. And Tony and I sat there, and then after Tony left us, Last Labor Day, mm. not not uh, not this uh, oh, over a year ago, mm. and I could feel his presence twice. And we're gonna go again, Tony. Hear what you have to say. And his presence—it was like a spirit took over the whole landscape. Wow! <laughs> he must have done some good things to be able to have that. Man. And Tony was great. Tony was great, yeah. including introducing us. Hi, Tony. Well, are we ready to continue in the story, or do let we miss us, anything? Let us continue with the story. Okay. Um, admonished to me, knowing that. And what you you had asked me last week what admonish means. Yeah. Do you, do you <laughs> remember? Do no. you remember? I forgot. Admonish is to say like naughty boy. Oh, uh, okay. Really. Where's that word again? Mm. Nothing in the dream had admonished me to be silent. So the dream hadn't told me to be silent. No, you be silent, you you were in your that wasn't that, that dream that wasn't the message of the dream, but having known then and I certainly knew now that only the most enlightened people have the right to use power to make rain. Wow. So we have to be careful where you're using our power, but we were yeah. more humble, our own legs. Yeah. The dream didn't tell her not to do that, but she should have known that just by instinct. And she did not, but now she learned. Just by wisdom. Now she learned. And ours is different. We're just asking for our own fears or our own um, legs to work, right? We're not using that magic out in the world yet. No, I think we're connecting with ourselves. We're connecting to the higher powers. We're connecting to each, uh, each other and other people. Uh, we're connecting to just everything in our lives to help us through this towards this goal um, and the more you think about it in a healthy way I feel like the more likely is it is to happen and we're healthy because we're not using it to influence anyone else no I and not the weather even no no I don't want to <laughs> we are learning to be humble yeah. <clears throat> okay only they can know when the need is great enough and the permission to proceed is clearly given. So that's the, um, the, the people who uh, are most wise of magic. If Read that sentence again. Sure. Only they can know when the need is great enough and the permission to proceed is clearly given. Oh, so we have to... Uh, supposedly, I should be a little enlightened at 82 and a half. I supposedly should know, but I, I'm learning this evening from John Joshua Williams Oxenford and Dina Mesker. Mm. If an American Indian, I would say Native American now, but maybe this is dated. If an American. What Indian, would you say now? A Native American? Oh, yes. Yeah. So if a Native American does a rain dance, she is already profoundly related to the land. I aspire to do that, to, I aspire to that relationship with the land. I suppose. Oh, but we don't have that, I don't have that yet. I don't, it doesn't sound like you either. No, I don't think I have the Even though I've lived in Cambridge for, since 19... 75, wow. that's 48 years, but oh, yeah. maybe a little connected to the park across the street, a little blindly. Do you ever have one of those moments where you have a really good thought and the light suddenly shines through your window? 
Tell me, I don't think so. Although I had it to, I have something like that when I'm fighting with my violence mm -hmm. and I just sit with it <laughs> and feel like murderous for a while. And then when I say thank you for the energy, it feels acknowledged and respected and used for good things. Mm -hmm. And then out of the cracked places in me, I do feel light coming through me and feel, oh, I'm sometimes exhausted, but oh, I feel blessed again. You were telling me how you feel like once you are able to deal with that anger in your unique way, get buds of flowers are in, in you are no longer crushed and, and can grow. Yeah, the anger comes from the crushing. Mm. People have been, you, um, you, you had a kinder upbringing than I. People have really stomped on me. Oh. And so if you're a little child and you're wanting to like a flower open up and they're <laughs> banging on you. Uh, so you get crushed in there and you get angry beyond belief because they're, they're not, you know, if you put a rose in a tight place and a kid, or we do this with chickens now that we eat, if, mm -hmm. if you don't eat, um, you know, organic free range chickens, mm -hmm. they're crushed in cages, they, I'm sure their food isn't so good for us. No, I've seen that. I've seen those videos. Um, my mother again would, you know, always encourage me only to get pasture raised, you know, free range. Um, good old, good Bob. Yeah, definitely. I'm lucky for that. But uh, yeah, something to remember. You know, those those chickens. You know, I think even though we may you know, eat animals uh, or not, but I eat animals, you know, treating them healthily respects them, it respects what created them, and it respects ourselves as well. Yes. Because it's, it's healthy for us. And the chicken could become John William Joshua, Joshua <laughs> William Ox. That's a, a peaceful evolution, isn't that what you wanted? <laughs> yes. It becomes part of your smile. Yeah. Peaceful evolution for the chickens whose eggs I eat. Yes, or the chickens themselves. Or ch all chickens, yes. Well, the, the ones that are crushed in cages. Mm. Oh, I, I... Most most of which to them, because they oh. go through a lot of pain and it's not fair. Oh, I... Yeah, I'm used to talking about it to really feel it is... Um, but I'll continually buy happy chickens. Excellent. And they'll be happy to be part of us. Yeah. Shall I continue? Yeah, sure. Okay. I aspire to that relationship, but I have not yet at, uh, attained it, achieved it. A relationship to With really the, feel uh, part of it. I guess I don't have it. I'm not there yet either. Mm. Um, Neither am I. Um, I feel like I do get communication from the weather sometimes but I don't feel like I have the power to change it or, or create oh, it. So what's an example of communication? You gave me one with the rain and your woman friend. Yes, um, yeah, it seemed to just relate to the tragedy of our distance. Um, wow. And sometimes I'll, I'll be thinking in a cloudy day, you know, the sun is going in and out of the clouds, but I'll I'll have this thought at the very moment that the sun shines through my window and it'll feel like such a... Wow! Thing. Careful of your power, man. Yeah, I, mm. I don't feel like I'm mm. making it happen. I feel like it's talking to me. I see. That's, so that's I see very, that as, one of those, yes. as just um, an appreciation. Yes, to that's, me, that's, so that's lovely, lovely distinction. Very humble. It's talking to me. Okay. And then um, sometimes, you know... You know, sometimes it'll it'll downpour on you, but sometimes you have those days where you, you did all your chores, you'll come back, and all of a sudden it'll start raining as soon as you got home. So it must be the rain saying, you can do your chores today. Wow. <laughs> but sometimes you get caught in the rain, you're like, why did that happen? Oh, the rain saying, it's good you did your chores, or you yeah. can do it? But it's good you did your chores. Oh. I gave you that space to do your chores. Wow. And thank you for and your and now it... So we're in the next paragraph now. I, I apologized for t 
teasing that I might do this dance for our mere entertainment. Wow. So this dance that causes the rain, she made a joke and she said, oh, Look, I can do it. Wow. I like, the rain. <laughs> oh, she's an honest writer, though, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. She knows when she's done wrong. Our mere entertainment. And, and, and revealing to us how... So maybe we won't do it as much. Yeah, we'll don't control the weather. That can affect climate change as well. <laughs> um, afterward, I spent some time uh, repenting my earlier breach of faith. The rains did not come, and the next day we traveled north towards Mesa Verde. Oh, so she after she said she was sorry, the rain stopped. Yeah. Oh my. Just like you, in a way, but maybe not still thinking. Some days. <laughs> still thinking she has some power to stop them. Yeah, she said sorry. Yeah. Abusing the power. Yeah, just like I said. Yeah. Thank you, violence, for giving me energy. Yeah, you thanked your anger, and then your anger uh, led up on crushing you. Yes. That's, yeah. that's, that's a yeah. very interesting thing to know. That's very profound. I'm glad you found that connection with it. Thank you. The following morning, when we were setting out, Michael said he suddenly felt that we would change our plans and go immediately to Canyon de Chile. Which is in another state. Yeah, so they were in, in New Mexico this time, but Michael said, let's go to Arizona. Let's do, that's where we're going eventually. Let's go. Okay. Let's go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hesitated. Mesa Verde was the only place on our itinerary which neither of us had ever visited, but he was adamant, so we, we heeded the call. Wow, that was his call. That's cool that she gave respect to this thing that he felt so passionately about. Yeah. And um, was able to change her plans. For oh, a good woman. God, a good woman. Very kind. Uh, we doubled back and drove through Navajo country. Looking all around us at the storms and lightning we had not seen at the lightning fields. And before we read about someone set up a bunch of uh, lightning rods to just catch the, the lightning as a kind of art, um, artwork. Um, we watched the mysterious patterns of black rain falling in the distance. Gee. Marveling as they were illuminated by pitchforks of lightning. Quite a scene. This, I, you, yeah. You're reading it, I can feel it like it's a movie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, lightning fields, if you ever want to go there. Um, pitchforks of light. When the roads became unmarked, then clay, we were a little concerned about the rain because we had intended to take these back roads to the canyon. So the rain is making the driving difficult. Oh, that's, so maybe they're getting closer to Arizona now. Yeah, getting closer to Arizona. Maybe this is a sign from the gods that, of you know, it did accept her to go to where she wants to go, but it also maybe is angry that she used the power. Played so trivially. Yeah. Exactly, wow. Exactly. Wow. Maybe. Um, or maybe for changing their route. I don't know. But... Um, they're taking the back road to the canyon. Just as we were approaching a rise, we came upon a Navajo man and asked him directions. Was this the road to Canyon de Chile? He responded by asking us if we would give him a ride to the camp where his people moved their homes and uh, livestock for the summer. A bit surprised by his answer, we hesitated only for a moment and rearranged the luggage in the back seat to make room for him. He was a little vague as to whether this was the road we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, I'm glad I read this story because at first I thought, oh, maybe he's tricking them just to get where he needs to be. Yes, that's what it sounds like. But uh, later on, they get to this place um. and their life has changed forever. So. <laughs> Little little uh, uh, stealer uh, spoiler there. Yes. Um, we came to the turnoff 
and Michael drove down the very narrow lane to take the man to his door. We came upon a compound, uh, sorry, a compound with a few houses and Hogan's. Don't know what that is. And the man insisted that we come inside to meet his mother. His mother is a very spiritual woman, as I believe. Um, when we entered, his mother was weaving a red, black, and white rug. She showed us the two rooms of the house, uh, other rugs for photographs, and objects on the wall. She said, I'm so glad you are here. This is how we live. We want you to know this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Strange thing to say, but very lovely. Mm. She suggested that we might return to stay in, in the Hogan if we didn't find a place to sleep. A Hogan sounds like maybe a, a garage, garage or something. Yeah, maybe another place of living. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while Michael got pinion nuts from the car to leave with them as a gift, Wow. Very good to leave a gift to people who have helped you. I don't know what pinion nuts are to you, ladies. No, she says she talks about them a lot in the book. No. Type of type of nut. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Well, I'm not going to pin your nuts to leave. Da, da, da. I asked again for directions. She gave them vaguely. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> like her son? Yeah, they're kind of over that way. <laughs> what else? What do you think about the ring? Uh, uh, waving her hands casually, left. Left, left, then right, right, right. No! <laughs> no. She knew she wasn't being precise. She knew she wasn't being precise. And it amused them both. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. But they're, they're connected with the weather. She must know something. Then she looked directly into my eyes and said, with a seriousness that could not be mistaken for road directions, don't worry. You will get to where you are going. Oh my! Wow, what good news! They're, they're that awesome. would be cool to say to someone. Yeah. <laughs> if you really thought it. They're don't awesome. worry. You, wow, what a great. I, I don't know if I dare. I would say I have a dear friend. He, he's going to get beyond where he's going. Don't worry. You go, that's actually feels humble to say it. Mm. You're gonna go. You're gonna get where you're going. Cause I think he's gonna go beyond that. Wow. Wow. So thank you. I'm gonna say that. For sure. For sure. That's true for you too. I'm sure. Don't worry. You're gonna get where you're going. Thank you so much. And me on the way out of this world eventually. Eighty-two. Well, eighty-two and a half. It might come. But first, I'd like to say, I don't know. But I really hope that you will get to those goals of being able to walk and run as you really want to. And I feel like the more you say that and believe that and think that, the more it will happen. I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Onward. We got confused at the first crossroads. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and I told Michael uh, what had transpired in that brief moment when he was getting nuts. So the Native American woman said to her that she will get, they will get where they were going while he wasn't there. Did you say they or you? Oh. Um, and you could be either singular or plural. It says you. And yeah, it could be both. Could be. Could be both. Hope it's both. Yes. Um, where they were going is getting nuts. We proceeded as best we could uh, until we again came upon a man walking along the road. Uh, since we wanted to be alone, we hesitated before. Asking, <laughs> but everyone was uh, We hesitated before asking for directions, knowing that he would ask us for it. Wow. He did, uh, saying that. He'd been walking for 10 miles and had another 10 to go. Uh, is this the road, we asked. Yes. <laughs> he, he, he muttered unconvincingly. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, uh, it must have rained prof profusely 
because after a few minutes the road had turned to mud. The thick red clay was sleek as oil. Uh, the ruts four, I don't know what that is, ruts four, five, six inches deep. The car... That's was, deep? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I'm surprised they could, could move out of it at all. Yeah. The, uh, the car could not hold the, the road. Right. Uh, sliding in the direction, or in one direction or another. We went down and inclined sideways. Wow! Yeah. Barely missing ditches. Oh my God, scary. He's talking about scared or scariness. Ditches, boulders, overturned logs. The Navajo man said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he knows they, where they're going. Um, he what? Maybe he knows where they're going. Yes. Uh, my terror of heights returned. When we reached a place where the road went along a cliff, I demanded... Oh! <laughs> no way! Yeah, I demanded that we stop. Yes, I don't blame her. Not asking, would you consider none of that? <laughs> stop! I will not die today. <laughs> I will what? I will not die today. Not no, I'm not going to die today. Um, I entreated Michael to abandon the car. We'll buy another in Chinle, um, I said, as if cars were apples. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we'll just buy another yeah, car right. yeah, with all our money. Yeah. <laughs> Michael was determined to negotiate the road despite <gasps> the clear danger. Whoa! Yeah. But fear overwhelmed me. Yes, I don't blame her. I'd be the same. No medicine tablet for her to take for this? No, no, I just gotta get the car. Yes. Um, I pulled on my cowboy boots and got out to walk. I could see lights some ten miles away. Gee. The Navajo said nothing, sitting still in the back of the... Wow! Cyrilli eating pinon. No! <laughs> He's just enjoying the ride. Because yeah. he knows where they're going. Yes, but it's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, reluctant to leave me, Michael suggested that he would drive the car until he came to a place where I would not be afraid, and there uh, he would wait. And so... He's very, very nice to each other. Respectful. Mm -hmm. That's kind, yeah. And so we proceeded for about seven miles. Whoa! I walked. Then we drove together. Then I walked a mile or so. They waited. We drove, and so on. Wow. Then, uh, when Michael was alone with the man in the car, he asked him uh, what the Navajo believed. He said he could not tell him in white man's language, but it was something about worshipping the sun. Oh, my. Beautiful thing. Uh, when we arrived at the man's house, he thanked us, took a pack package of pinyon nuts, and left. <laughs> Immediately after we turned the next bend, we were on a dry road. Oh, he probably couldn't have been on it all along. Yeah. We were on a dry road that looked like it had never seen rain. Wow. And in moments, we were on the paved highway to Canyon de Chen. Oh, my. Do you think that's possible? Do you think that's real? I think it's real. I think it's real. She's just such a good writer, you kidding me. Hardly not believe her. Yeah, I gotta believe her. Hard, very hard not to believe her. Well, I've never been to an, through a journey like that, so how could I say that it's not real if I've never been to something And like we're at least as drastic as that. hoping a little bit we might be able to take it. Yeah, I mean... Maybe it sounds hard. dangerous. I'm not I'm, sure we want to. I don't even have my driver's license yet. No, I can't I'm drive sure. anymore. Did you? We both be walking, maybe so. No, I'm not, I'm not such a good walker either, yeah. unless this, this willful uh, mantra works. Something to try. It was almost sunset. Michael asked me to close my eyes, and he led me blind to the rim of the canyon. They were getting along very well. I know. I know. It ends well for them as well. You what? It ends well for them as well. Mm. Um, I opened my eyes to the greatest natural beauty I've ever seen. The light was just fading, 
but there was enough to make luminous the soft, deep, red clay walls. One thousand feet below. Gee! Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just stepping back a little bit. Yes. Yeah. A glistening snake of red clay river twisted through small milpas of maize, which had been uh, worked for more than a thousand years. It's S small what of maize? Uh, milpas. Milpas? Mil M I L P A S. I guess a little plot or something, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Of maize? Yeah. Maize is a, a crop, isn't it? A corn, yes. Yeah. Okay, now I get that. Uh, the, the brush and junipers on the ledges curling like the pubic hair of the mother. Gee! Uh, mother Nature. Yes, wow! Yeah, I've, I feel like I have a connection to Mother Nature. Wow. But I'm not sure that everything in nature is a mother, a, a woman. But I do feel like Mother Nature is the boss of it. Oh my, because the, for the Greeks, Poseidon was the god of the sea. Oh yeah, the sea, Poseidon. Yeah, and Zeus was the god of thunder and lightning. Yes, he was the big guy. He was the big guy, yeah. The god of the gods. Who else there? Um, Athena of wisdom. Who's the guy? Apollo of the sun? Yes. Or Ra in Egyptian? Yes. God of the sun. An epic thing to be. And, and in, we, in scientific terms, we could think of it as the energy field of the sun. Yeah. And that energy field, if we just think of it as aware or alive, which it is in science, it is moving and mm -hmm. sensitive and radiating. So all we have to do is add a little awareness and we've got a God. <laughs> cool. Creating gods. <laughs> and maybe it's, it's all in our mind. And maybe more. Maybe more. Uh, the pubic hair of the mother. And the cottonwoods beside the river all gleamed with a blue-green sheen and underwater, an underwater hue as if phosphorescent with the light of another world. Wow, maybe on that happy note. Mm. Uh, can we mark that? Yeah, definitely. We are close to finishing the show today. Uh, oh, I'll be sad when well, there's many more stories in this book. No, I mean we're not we're not close to finishing the story. Oh, we're good. Close to finishing the show. We've oh, the show, yes. We about two minutes. Two minutes. So how can we sum up what we? Maybe in two ways, mm -hmm. cerebrally mm -hmm. and experientially. What do we think and what do we experience about this story? Mm. And feel, I think. Uh, yeah, experience would include feel. Okay, got it. Um, I feel moved by it. Um, because... It just seems so descriptive and bigger than me. I don't know. It just seems like something so massive that I've never seen before. Yeah, it seems like the environment certainly is part of the story. Mm. Big time. Mm. The rain, the muddy roads, and now this um, otherworldly feel of the thousand foot canyon. I don't think this is Canyon de Shea, I don't think. Maybe it is. I think it is. Oh, this is it. This is what the, where they would go. I think you might be right. We can figure that out through the rest of the story, but I'm pretty sure this is it. I think this is it. And I hope we can go. I'm not sure I'm brave enough to go. <laughs> I'll try. Be embarrassed to be a coward. We have 30 seconds. Any last words? Um... I don't know if you're interested in this sort of mantra, praying, sort of wishing thing. It, remember to use your mind, but also use your heart both at the same time. Gee. Which is something that I'm not sure if I can do yet. I'm not sure I can do I'm it either. It it Maybe long. next, stay tuned. We'll be back in a week, I hope. Yes? Yeah. Great. Be well. Happy fall. <laughs>